Now, let us discuss about uh, one more uh, interesting concept called zero work. That means, work can be positive, can be negative, sometimes work can be zero also. How? The small story I will tell you. In the railway station, the Mr. P got down from the train standing on the platform with a large suitcase. So, while passing a railway coolie approached him and asked him to lift the asked him, asked him to lift the luggage. Then Mr. P told him that yes, you can uh, lift the luggage and please bring it outside the railway station. Then the coolie put the luggage on the big suitcase on his head and walked across the platform and he came out of the platform and put the luggage on the ground. Then Mr. P told thank you very much and he is going. Then the coolie stopped, sir give, pay, me, pay me the work what you have done. Then Mr. P laughed at him and he said you have done zero work so I do not pay you. Then there is a fight between Mr. P and the railway coolie. Then who is the right one here? Mr. P is correct one or the railway coolie is correct. So to know this, let us discuss about zero work. As we know that work W equals to force into displacement. Work can be zero in three cases. In three cases. One, F equal to zero implies work can be zero. F equal to 0 means do not think that S is 0, S is not 0, only force is 0 but S is there. The force applied on the body is 0 but displacement is there, still work is 0, how it is possible? See when F equal to 0 according to Newton's second law, MA equal to 0 implies A equal to 0 implies what is acceleration, change in velocity by time, that means change in velocity V minus U equal to 0 implies V equal to U. So, what you understand with this? Force is 0 when body moves with the same velocity which is called constant velocity. So, any car moving with constant velocity V equal to constant velocity then it does not feel any force. Then it does not do any work also. So, this is the first case. Now, second one. When displacement is 0, S equal to 0 implies there also work equal to 0 because keep S equal to 0 here, W equal to 0. But F is not 0 here, means you are applying the force but the body is not moving. For example, you are looking at me, I am applying force on the board, I am applying force with my hand. But do you think the board is moving? No. So, the force is applied but there is no displacement, then we say this work done is 0. And the third one very interesting case, when force is perpendicular to displacement, force is perpendicular to displacement means when the angle between displacement and force is 90 degrees, in that case also work done is 0. Why 90 degrees 0 you get to know when you go to higher classes because this formula actually fs cos theta, but in your level we discuss only double equal to fs. So, when you go to higher classes, you get to know more things. So, when force and displacement are perpendicular, work done is 0. Now, come back to the story here. Mr. P has told that you did not do any work, I do not pay you because the coolie kept the luggage on his head. The luggage has weight, is acting downward. The weight is gravitational force, yes. But how the railway coolie is moving? He is moving horizontally on the road. When moving horizontally on the road, S is horizontal. Therefore, the angle between them is 90 degrees. And the 90 degrees, as I said, W is 0. So, that is why he is a physicist. That is why he said that there is no work. Of course, it is for fun we can take with it, but you should know that we have to pay the money. We understood that the work in physics we need to take which is measurable. And that you can measure using the formula W equal to Fs. But the question is, if you want to do work, what you require? Yes, you require energy. If you want to do 12 joules of work, 
you should have minimum 12 joules of energy. If you want to do 100 joules of work, you should have 100 joules of energy. So actually we say work and energy are interchangeable. How much amount of energy you have, that much amount of work only you can do. You have 100 joules of energy, you cannot do 150 joules of work. It is not possible. It is opposite to natural laws. So it is not possible. So how much of energy you have, that much of work you can do. So that is why energy is defined as the capacity of doing work. So it is the capacity capacity of doing work that is the energy definition it's very simple definition and work and energy both are same interchangeable you can interchange so therefore both have same SI unit that is joules now the question is how many types of energies we have? Plenty types of energies we have. Let us have list down the types of energies. Types of energy. Yeah, so we have mechanical. Mechanical we have. Next, solar. That's correct. Nuclear. Light. Electricity, wind, or how many you have? Geothermal, etc. If I start writing, it will take uh, more than one hour to write the types of energies we have. This is the basic energies we have. We can say sound energy, magnetic energy, all our energies only. But here, here our basic discussion, main discussion is mechanical energy, the energy which is produced due to mechanical force. So, mechanical energy. So, energy is produced due to mechanical work. And these mechanical energies are two types. One is kinetic energy and other one is potential energy kinetic and potential you are walking on the road you are running then whatever energy you have if you want to do is walking and running so while you are walking and running the energy you generate is kinetic energy see I am throwing the marker in upward direction throwing the marker when you want to throw in the marker, the energy generated by the marker is potential energy. So, what, how can we classify kinetic energy and potential energy? So, the definition is, of, is kinetic energy is generated when the body is in motion. So, it is generated when the body is in motion. So, if you take a body of mass m moving with the velocity v then the kinetic energy formula is given by half m v square k equal half m v square this is the formula to calculate kinetic energy now coming to potential energy so when do you generate potential energy as i said when i throw the marker up the marker has potential energy that means it is the energy generated when you change the position of a body against the gravity. Against the gravity. Changing position against the gravity. Against gravity. That is why sometimes this potential energy is called gravitational potential energy also. So, there is a ball of mass m you have thrown upward to a height h, to a height h for example. Then the potential energy is given by m g h, 
m is the mass g is the acceleration due to gravity the constant value dynamics per second square h is the height thrown sometimes it also called gravitational potential energy potential energy you can also generate in different ways when you change the shape of the body or when you change the size of the body also you can generate potential energy you take a paper and you crush the paper take a cup crush the paper cup the size is changed shape is changed that means you are generating the potential energy one more good example take the rubber band and stretch it and you leave it and what happens the rubber band comes to its initial state again it is because the rubber band when you stretch it it generates potential energy and that energy makes the body to comes comes back to the initial state again so potential energy is also called energy stored inside the body each and every body has potential energy inside and this potential energy can be converted into many ways kinetic energy sound energy light energy electrical energy magnetic energy nuclear energy etc if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus